It's dancing. Yo, welcome back. What is going on? Welcome to Real Tea. Real Tea. Jacob came up with that name. Yeah, that's going to be our little podcast while we're in the golf cart. While we're golfing. Yeah, so we'll talk golf. We'll talk golf courses around Colorado, some of our favorites, and then, uh, of course, real estate. Yes, yes. So welcome back for another episode. Stay with us this uh, duration and uh, see what you can pick up. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, so I'll, Jacob had a Actually, great... Actually, first, first, first. Oh. What, uh, what do you think? Well, what course are we playing? Uh, Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. Oh, there's a ball. And that's on the, the south side of Denver. South side of Denver over by Cherry Creek Reservoir. Nice little city course. Um, it's one of the courses that... That's me. That's basically open year round, as long as there's no snow on the ground. And they've got they've got three nine hole courses and a part three. So like today we're playing eighteen and we're just doing two of the nine courses. Yep. And uh, I'm also really good at turning part threes into part fives. Well, that's the object of the game. Oh yeah, you got to it... ch- challenge yourself. <laughs> I'll tell you what, dude. First time home buyers. If they are not partnered with someone good, they're like me golfing. You're all over the place. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, and it takes you forever to get to your goal. And then when you get there, you're kind of frustrated because you're like, it took me way too long to get here, longer than it should have. It wasn't a good experience. We got over the tree, though. It's, you see how it's falling right? There it goes. Yep. Sole objective was to get over the tree. So, um, on another note as well, when you're out golfing, please put your food away. <laughs> Jacob was yeah. squirrel jack this morning. whole bag of sunflower seeds. <laughs> Fresh <laughs> bag. Picked it up on my way to the course. Crack it open. I put one handful in my mouth. We go to the tea box. And we just hear the seeds fall everywhere. And yeah, the squirrel jacked my seeds and took the whole bag up the tree. Squirrel jacking. So... Seal your seeds. Uh, there's Gary in the bunker. I flew the green. Yeah. I think today we're just going to talk about maybe what we've been seeing in the market lately because it's definitely been picking up um, on both the sellers and buyer side and how we can strategize um, moving forward as we approach spring season. Um, and then John brought up a good idea of some seller tips as well. If you're thinking about listing your home, some things that you can do to make your listing, um, what a little bit more stand out more. Yeah. Stand, stand out, out more than others. Um, when it comes to listing, just to give you guys some ideas, I, I was actually looking at my numbers for listings. Uh, right now I'm at a hundred percent for listings that have sold over asking. Um, and that goes back a couple years. So, Something, something's happening there, but you know, with my clients, it's a lot about how we set the home up and things of that sort. So we'll we'll definitely get into that. Um, first thing I want to acknowledge, Jacob, to, you know, let us know about your week. What what happened this yeah, week? What's so, going on? So got a buyer under contract. Him and I have been working a lot over the past month, month and a half, on finding him a home. He's a first time home buyer, and he really wanted to find something in the Littleton area, and we've been looking, looking, looking. Um, but the market's been hot, which means we've been losing, we put some offers in on several homes and lost multiple offers. But on Saturday, we checked out a home that hit the market Friday, um, loved it. And then we put an offer in on Sunday night and then today's Tuesday. So yesterday we got, uh, the acceptance. So we beat, uh, multiple offers. Now, something that I think is important to note is, um, a big misconception is the highest price would typically win mm-hmm. in the negotiation, but in this situation, it didn't. We were actually competing against multiple offers and our asking price was the lowest. However, the listing agent and the seller really liked the clean contract that I uh, compiled. Um, and then they wanted the rent back. And that means that the seller, after the closing date, they live in that property for, um, for example, for this property, it's 30 days. Yep. So we did that at no cost. And then we just used some other negotiation strategies so that way I could save as much money in my buyer's pocket as possible, but also um, win against the multiple offers that we were seeing. So 
that was a big highlight of the week. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. Congrats, congrats. Thank you, That's thank always you. Always big. So, is if you're a buyer with multiple offer situations, like even though we won the offer and we were the lowest asking price, we still submitted an offer above asking. We only went five grand over. Um, and my buyer was kind of intimidated by that at first. He didn't want to drop an extra five grand. But when you break it down, and this is what I explained to him, is it was only an additional $13 added to his monthly payment. So it's really doable. And I told him, I was like, it's not worth losing a home over that you really want. And the five grand can go a long way or however much you go above. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, too, is it's when it's broken down over 30 years. Um, it's not that much. No. No, and that's a very realistic point too, but it showed the other part of that is you have an understanding of that particular home, that location, because there is a limit, right? I'm not going, I'm not going to have my buyer submit an offer that's $30,000 over and the neighborhood doesn't call for it. Like yeah. if, if you really, and not the buyer says, I really, really want this home no matter what, that's one conversation, but. Well, that's the thing too. I was looking at comps in the area yep. comparable homes and recently sold and ones that are on the market or coming soon and if we offered much higher and we would have gotten the offer accepted i was concerned that then we would have appraisal issues um, with an appraisal gap potentially in the mix because the appraisal wouldn't come in at the price point that we right. got accepted so so there's a realistic portion on both sides for the buyer and the uh seller yeah um, oh so yeah so you coming off your but first close or your first first, first uh under contract yeah we're approaching the close 30 days out so under contract's the first step so this weekend i have let's see a closing on friday uh or one of my listings 10k over asking uh this was a home that we were on the market winter and fall had a couple deals that fell through um, the seller wanted to lower the price and basically I just, you know, advising that it wasn't worth it. It would be better off just waiting a couple of months as we approach spring to see, you know, what happens. And he took my advice. He listened. Uh, we came back to market. Well, this was the guy that you took off the market. Yep. In yep. January. Yes. Okay. So we came back to the market That's in me. about after Super Bowl, a weekend after Super Bowl. Um, and essentially ended up with four offers over asking within 24 hours, right? So I say that just to say that's how quickly the market could change and have an agent that understands the market and ebb and flow of the changes puts you in the best position. So versus us dropping the price in December or January, another 20, 10 to 20,000 and paying uh, buy down costs. He actually made ten thousand more, this. and didn't have to pay any buy down costs. So, just kind of a benefit of the season. So, close on that home on Friday. Um, also on Friday was negotiating with a handful of contracts on a home that I put on the market on Wednesday. We received multiple offers over asking in that situation as well. So kind of like what Jacob was saying with his buyer, they were in that same boat where how you write the offer matters. And with this situation, we chose the offer one, that was the cleanest contract. And two, that gave my seller oh my gosh. what they wanted, what they needed. Oh, he <laughs> thank God you hit lot. that tree. Um, <laughs> you know, and that it ended, did. Up, ended up being the offer that won. But again, this is a house that just went to market, multiple offers under contract. This one was within 48 hours. Um, and I say that to say that just down the street, there's homes that have been on the market since December timeframe, January timeframe, that's not getting any action that matched, matched the specs oh. of the home that I, I listed, but yet we were able to get under contract immediately and those houses are still sitting on the market. So again, it's just another situation that out, outlines why the agent matters, the strategy matters, the team matters. Yeah, it's probably a triple if you got got to got to count it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, whenever you say let me think about it. Yeah. 
It's at least a triple. It's at least a triple. <laughs> that being courteous. Dude, if it didn't hit that tree, it was going into their yard. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is, so, this is Colorado though at its finest. So today, 60 degrees, tomorrow, 65 degrees, and, and then Thursday and Friday, two feet of snow, two feet of snow. <laughs> so if you like to ski and then turn around and play golf the next day, this is definitely the place to be, which actually, yep, yep, yep. Um, so yeah, so we we're touching on, so the house under contract. So in, in Jacob's situation, looking at it from a uh, a listing agent's perspective like a clean contract that's going to be easy to close and really what we're looking for is the minimum amount of risk so even if some the most surefire one to get to the closing get table. to the closing table because at the end of the day that's the end goal is to get our client to the closing table um and that could be something as simple as all offers are equal and one person's putting more as a down payment than another person um, in Jacob's situation, they were willing to give the seller a rent back, which is important in this market because now that seller has time to go find their home or if it's a new build, wait for their home to close. So some things come in there that I don't think when people, when some people write contracts that they don't think about holistically, um, and they don't win as many deals for their clients. So, um, so yeah, so I got one closing, one home under contract. And then on Saturday, I got two buyers under contract, um, both with builders. And this is just something I've been harping on since November about rates. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people, you know, fussing about rates and high rate environment. And it's definitely that. Uh, but in this situation, both my buyers and again, it's negotiating. It's knowing where to go. It's knowing what to show them and it's, it's knowing who to talk to. But both my buyers ended up one with a 30 year fix of 5.3% and the other with a 30 year fix of 5.2% new construction homes with all appliances included. So refrigerator, washer, dryer, dishwasher, stove top, cooktop, microwave, all included. So essentially they're just moving in the home. And that, know, that rate buy down was something that the builder was offering, right? We got it from the builder. So one situation, it was $30,000 credit on top of a $20,000 credit on the house. So that's a $50,000 $50, swing. The other scenario, I would imagine, they didn't show me the cost of the buy down, but I would imagine it was $30,000 um, 30, as well, somewhere in that ballpark. And then 11000 discount on the house. So that was about a $40,000 swing for my client. And we're not even talking about the cost of appliances right um you know so that's really how it goes again with you know having the right team and, and what we're seeing in the market so a resale house had multiple offers and i was able to find a home for my buyer where there was no competition and get everything in their favor yeah so you're on the fairway yep do you see it it's right behind me oh yeah you almost yeah, went through the edge. fairway almost you're past this big tree I think. That's a pretty tough. I don't see a bowl. Is that you way up there? By that little tree? Oh, uh, yeah. Ah, damn. Like I'll take that. Hopefully. Yeah, that is you. Nope. Nope. Straight. That's not a ball. Yeah, right there. Oh, there it is. It's the car path. Sweet. Yes, yeah, sir. Over here. Um, what are some tips you'd, if someone was thinking about selling right now, because this is definitely starting to trend into a seller's market, um, what are some tips you'd give someone if they're thinking about listing their house? So, once again, I think I got a pretty good record as far as home selling over asking pretty quickly. So, what I tell my clients when we're getting ready to list, the number one thing to focus on Oh, as far it. as <laughs> cleanliness and things of that sort, is try to make your home look as much as possible like a model home. So if you're not sure what that looks like, go see a model home, take yeah. a look, you know. Take and, away family photos, take those down off the wall. Yep. Because your whole goal is to make it a home that the, a prospective home buyer could see, see themselves, see themselves in. in. So right. if they're driving around, 
not driving, we're driving. But if they're viewing a house and they see pictures of you and your family, how are they going to be able to picture their their family in that house? Exactly. So that would be that would be the biggest, most important tip. Make your home look as close to a model home as possible when it comes to clutter. You know, we know we're not going to have it when it comes to furniture and things of that sort, but when it comes to clutter, go for the, the model, house, model home approach. Uh, so, so seller tips as we head into spring. So number one, declutter. Get your home looking as closely as possible to a, a model home. Take family photos off the wall. Take family photos off the wall. Number two, my thing is be flexible, right? So often... When someone wants to see your home, you just want to be ready to allow that individual to see it because we really don't know who's looking and how quickly they're ready to act, right? So I think being flexible is something that we don't talk about when it comes to showing. So if it's a weekend and maybe you have a weekend getaway or go hang at an in-law's house or something like that, just leave Saturday open. Yeah. Sunday open. Yeah. And also, if you have pets... Um... I know it can be tricky to, to haul the pets around, but like a lot of times when I'm showing buyers homes, there's cats running around the house. And even if the buyer and I don't mind having the cats roaming around, um, it can be a liability issue too. I mean, we don't want those things running out the door when we're opening doors and garages and all this stuff because we don't know what they're going to do. Yep. Um, so try and keep your pets either caged up or take them with you. Um, keep that in mind also. Um, and then the other tip, to me, you know, curb appeal. So make sure your front yard. Now we understand winter is a little different, but as spring rolls around, make sure your front yard, your backyard is manicured, because uh, that makes a difference. Especially if a buyer has the possibility of choosing a home, meaning they have multiple options. Obviously, if it becomes a strictly seller market, the odds are in your favor. But in a more neutral market, definitely make sure that that yard maintains the curb appeal. Yep. And then outside of that, get the right team. Get the group that knows what's going on, the group that knows the trends, knows how to price your home, yeah. um, you know, and knows how to market your home. Yeah. Like I said, a lot of the homes that were in the neighborhood of the home that I got under contract in two days have been on the market since that really November, That's December, over there. January time frame. So, um Maybe they were priced incorrectly for the time period, but now they are, at the time, they may have been overpriced uh, for the time period, but now they're in line. However, they've been sitting on the market for two months, three months. So definitely consider working with the right team, pricing your home correctly. Keep in mind that the home price is a strategy, not the value of the home. We don't know the true value of your home, honestly, in my opinion, until we're sitting at the closing table and the buyer signs a contract. Look, you're talking about the team you were talking about. Um, I think a lot of people, when they're picking a realtor, don't account for all of the people that that agent uses. Um, and it's important to know that when you're interviewing for an agent, that they have a good team around them. And that can be your lender. Um just handymen yep handymen but, uh, inspectors inspectors are big because i don't know if people know this and i talked about this a couple weeks ago but in colorado you don't need any certifications or license to be an inspector to be an inspector mm -hmm. so i could theoretically hire john to run my home inspection um where he's never done it before and so just look out for those things i think that's you right yep. here yep look out for those things because that's important and that can really make or break a deal also, speaking on this home inspections, right, again, having an agent and even the buyer and seller knowing the market because in a competitive buyer, buyer's market where homes are receiving multiple offers, like I have to set proper expectations with my buyer on what to expect, what we should negotiate during the inspection process. Right. So if it's a home that received multiple offers and this is happening over and over again and that's the season, I'm not going to ask for a hinge on a water faucet. Mm. Like that's a minor yeah. fix. Right. 
I'm not going to ask for a particular lock on a window. You know what I mean? Like those are little things. So yeah. you don't want your buyer to lose a home after looking for three months, four months because of minor things. So really when it comes to the inspection process, like it's the important things, the things that are major, major health and safety major concerns, health and foundation safety. issues, yep. roof. roofing issues, HVAC, HVAC, sewers. water heater. Yep. You have a sewer scope done every time you have an inspection. That's not a default thing, but make sure that they run a sewer scope too. Are you sure? Because there's three balls, and I would like to think that one way up there is mine. He just drove by that one. I think Aaron just hit that one. Oh, okay. That would have been pretty jazzed. Yeah, so you're back here. How far out do you think we are? Uh, oh, there's the 150 marker. 140? I'm showing maybe? 138, 140. Yep. Oh, get down. Oh, good Thanks. shot, John. Thanks. Probably Very have, nice. My 54. Get back there a little bit more. Nice that the sun's out now. Yeah. <laughs> now it's heating up. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so knowing where and how to negotiate depending on what's going on, the trends and the market, right? Same thing for a seller. If you're selling the home and you're in the inspection process, you know, if it's something simple to fix, let's fix it and keep the process going, right? There's no reason to lose out on the buyer if your home has already been on the market 90 days because you don't want to pay for a faucet handle. Off the toe, but it's going. Get up there, baby. Get up there. Get up there. Yeah, but first we were talking about appraisals, right? And appraisal gap. Oh, the appraisal gap. Okay, so my buddies asked me what an appraisal gap was the other <laughs> week, and I explained it to them, and then they're like, "Okay, explain that to me as if I was a first grader." Okay. So what did you say? this is how I explained it. I said, "All right, imagine you're a kid and you go to the toy store, you you spot out a, a toy house that you really want, um, and you're like, okay, it's ten dollars." And your dad says, all right, I'll give you up to $10. But if you pay for more, and then the guy at the store says it's worth less, then you have to find the money to cover the rest that I'm not going to pay for. Oh, okay. So he goes to the toy store. He ends up buying the house for $10. But the guy comes back and he's like, hey, this toy house is only worth $8. Well, his dad only gave him $8 for that house. Yep. So he had to bring somehow come up with two extra dollars to cover Buy that gap. Yep. And uh, and then they understood it. <laughs> I was like, wow, is that all it takes? <laughs> Some crayons. Got to treat them like their kids, man. <laughs> so I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna just start defining real estate terms for first graders. <laughs> <laughs> Write a book. Um, I should probably do one of those good old hook shots here, huh? Uh, you know they say the tree is ninety percent air. <laughs> Not in this situation. It's a hundred percent wood. Should I go over the tree or should I go around? I would aim out that palm tree or that pine tree out on the right. Yeah. All right. Put that camera on me. I'm going to teach these kids a thing or two about golf. How to do? What do we call this? A hook shot? A hook shot? Yeah. It's going to be a hook shot. So the it's all in the club face. In which way it's pointing. So my good friend John Nichols taught me that if you want a hook shot. No, okay, well, no matter what you do for golf, your swing needs to finish right if you're a right-handed golfer, right? Swing Isn't right, correct? down and right. But you'll have you'll tilt your club face in left, and then watch what happens. This is the magic sauce. That didn't quite go as planned. 90% uh, air. Yep, he hit the tree. I hit the air. other 10%. <laughs> so we're on hole hole six, six of which on the Bay Lynn side, yeah. Bay Lynn, Bay Lynn. Um, and there's a there's a ravine, a river going through the fairway. So a lot of people don't know that on this hole, you just got to bomb it over the ravine. You're not gonna make it's like probably three and some change. Yeah. So if you land in the ravine, the drop zone is actually on the other side. You see what I'm saying? So you'll be hitting three, so be shooting on three on the other side. So and you'd bomb it anyway. If you lay it up, you're gonna be hitting two. You guess what? You're gonna be hitting three from the other side unless you can hit the green from this side, which 
you're still a good which you could do I'm 200 looking, out you'd be 220 out yeah. if you laid up so 215 out from here to the green depends on how much fun you want to have on this one so i've never seen a par four slash five it depends on what tee box you're using so and it, your handicap yeah so with this one if you're playing black or silver it would be a five what are we playing gold gold four, four. yep Uh, what was that last one? I got plus one. Are you going to go drive with me? I'm thinking about I mean, I've been able to get it. I got to see how far that ravine is. Because the past couple I hit. Well, from, from here to the ravine, it's 270. Gary, did you par? To the end of the fairway here is 240. That's 240. And then you got to lay up. It's, here the ravine is 270 out. Yeah, but to clear it. To clear it. 360. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bryson Sambo. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Hot they, damn. They, they got some money on the line. Well, it's her birthday, so oh. she's feeling good. It's probably through you see that happy birthday on her windshield? Yeah. Oh, that shit. We could throw it close. Did you decide what you're doing yet? Gary got his driver. I'm going driver. But no way my broken rattling driver's gonna crank at 360. You got two phones? Yep. One for work. One for the club. One for the club. My guy. Yeah, I don't even know if I should go. I'm gonna go a five iron. I wanna show you guys Kennedy Golf Do course. Do the right thing, yeah. So this is one of the nine hole courses at Kennedy. Um, right there is Highway 225. So on the other side of that berm is Cherry Creek Re Reservoir, of course. And it's honestly in pretty good condition. Been wait for that. And like John said, they try and keep time. it open year round. We're on a par three now, and John's about to tee off here. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll show you what it looks like. Not a bad shot. He's pretty good at golf. If you want to know something he's better at, though, it's selling homes. So, 